Greetings, my friends, and welcome to Easy Charms and Dangles. We'll be making a few today, all easy and all fun. You can use up your scrap chain and scrap beads and bindings. I'm starting with some tools that I use all the time, and you can see that they were purchased back in the Stone Age, when I believe God was a baby. Anyway, they're old. Uh, they fit in my hands like uh, they're made to go there because I've been using them for 35 years. Uh, you'll need two pair of some kind of pliers to open things. Uh, that bent chain nose plier and then the regular straight one are really neat to have if you can find them. I also use a cutter and a round nose plier. Uh, now, if you don't have all those handy, uh, you can get two pair of these three-in-one tools from Walmart. They're under $4. But you will need uh, two pairs so you can grasp things. You've got that flat section there that uh, makes really nice 90-degree bends in your wire. You use that flat part to uh, straighten out your uh, loops and to open rings. Got a cutter and then that round nose. So that's really quite a bit for your money. Uh, but get two pairs so that you uh, can do the things you're going to need to do. We'll start with this wire through our chain pull that we made in the Natasha class last week. Uh, in order to make a wrap loop, there are just a couple steps. Uh, you're going to want to know how to do this if you don't already, because uh, when you have a wrap loop, it's quite a bit more secure, and you can hang it from an open loop, a regular jump ring, or eye pin. A lot more security knowing that one of them is a closed loop. So you're just wrapping it around. You'll see I'm using the highest position on those round nose because I want a big loop this time. Take and flatten it out, and grasp it, and now I can pull that wire around. Once you've got one revolution, that's all that is functional any more revolutions are decorative. And I like the way they look in a project like this. They have a few little wraps. So I did mine like this. Trim it off nice and flush. And then I usually just give it a pinch to make sure that that uh, little jagged edge isn't sticking out where it will poke anyone. And then straighten out the wire. We'll be making uh, wrapped loops two more times in this project with uh, our regular uh, eye pins and, and head pins. And you'll see how handy they are for these kind of projects. This bottom loop I'm making just a regular loop, like an eye pin loop. So you'll see the difference between these two. And the secret to those kind of loops are to grasp it twice like I just did. So you make that angle. You grab it, turn it once, let it go, and then turn it again. For measuring out the scrap chain, I uh, just put it on this eye pin so that I can cut it at different lengths and see how it's going to hang. And I'm going to start by attaching it to the bottom of this fan pole with a, a jump ring. A heavier gauge jump ring uh, has got less elasticity and is less likely to open over time. So you'll see in your projects where you need a heavier gauge ring or heavier gauge pins or heavier gauge wire and when something lighter will suffice. And that just comes with time and experience and depends on your project. So I'm hanging this loop from that little bottom one and I'm dangling my chains like that. Uh, you can leave them all the same length if you want to, or you can leave them off and just dangle things from that um, jump ring. So we've got some head pins there. See my little stash of things? It's scrap beads, scrap findings, uh, two kinds of jump rings, and some uh, head pins. You want to start your, your charm with a little stopper. That's why I put that tiny bead at the bottom there, because some of the findings that you may want to add to your charm uh, have bigger holes and the head pin would go through them. So I just put a teeny little stopper 
right over the head pin whenever I make a charm and that way it's more secure. This is such a great use for all the single little things you have left. You know, I don't have a lot of any of those that you see there. One or two at the most, usually one, otherwise I would make earrings. But, you know, you can take uh, what's left over and make just such unique charms. So I'm gonna do the wrapped loop again. And I'll show you how you do a smaller one just by using um, a, a smaller uh, end of your round nose plier. See how that's a lot softer wire? So I can just grab that and just wind it right around. It's really easy to do. Still gonna keep it flat as I can so that the loop isn't twisty. Cut it really close like that. And then I just draw it in, tidy it up a little bit. Make sure that that cut end is not uh, sticking out and flatten it. That's just a little rondelle and you know, a little heart uh, charm. I love those, but as I say, I've only got one, so this is a good use for it. Just a little pink Swarovski. Those are hard to find. A little silver pumpkin bead. And that oval faceted bead, I just love. And I don't have any more of them. I'm going to pop that bead cap on make a nice charm out of that. Not a lot of use for one bead cap, right? So this is the thing you want to use them for. I'll pull, put one at the very top here and make my loop. We'll make it one last time. A lot of you are awesome wire workers. It's just some people have told me that uh, they haven't done this before, so that's why I just was showing you a couple times today. I've got it wrapped, I've got that loop made, twist, twist, and flatten and go. I can sit and make these charms for hours. I think you really like it too. They're beautiful on uh, focal pendants dangling down from there. They're great for earring bundles. You can do the chains like we're doing today. And of course, you know, little decor items like this fan pull. So I'm attaching this a uh, little elephant to the end of this one chain with just an oval ring. It could be a round ring. And don't forget that, you know, when you have a lot of scrap cane, you've got a lot of jump rings. I've taken apart many chains to make the right size jump ring that I didn't have. But uh, I added it today with just a small oval jump ring that I had on hand. And now I'm going to attach these dangles and I'm just going by their length and how they look on the different lengths of chain. So anytime you open up a jump ring, you do it in a side to side motion, like forward and back rather than opening it by pulling it open. Really, once you open a ring by yanking the sides open or right to left, it's kind of ruined. So you open it that way and stick it through the chain. Now you have your nice little secure charm there. It's not going to slip off. And close the ring back. These are good sellers at, uh, you know, little art shows and fairs. Because uh, most people don't know to make charms. And they're so spectacular. All those little pretties all bundled up together in one spot. This is a teardrop, faceted teardrop that I'm crazy about, but again, I only have one. So I just put a couple of uh, tiny seed beads on that ring just to show it off a little bit. And I'm attaching it to a different area of the chain. And you can completely fill those chains up top to bottom with little charms like that for fullness. It's a beautiful look and I've done it a lot of times. So they don't all have to be dangling down at the end. You can put them wherever you want. So there we have it. Um, I think you're going to want to make charms. I love making them. I'll see you next week, and we're going to put some cane on a bowl. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.